Hello, friends, and welcome to Ripley's Aquarium of Canada. My name is Danielle. I'm one of the educators here, and this is my friend Toki, who's pointing at our friend the lump sucker, the Pacific lump sucker. Uh, that is what we are talking about today. Uh, but as always, we are going to do our land acknowledgement first. Ripley's Aquarium of Canada acknowledges that we are on the traditional territory of many nations, including the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Anishinaabek, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee, and the Wendat peoples, and is now home to many diverse First Nations, Inuit, and Métis peoples. We also acknowledge that Toronto is covered by Treaty 13, signed with the Mississaugas of the Credit, and the Williams Treaty signed with multiple Mississaugas and Chippewa bands. Well, friends, these are called spiny lump suckers. We have four of them in our tube anemones habitat. If you're coming to visit us, you will see a dome-shaped habitat next to the octopus habitat, and that is where these animals live. And they are really amazing and adorable, and they're really hard to spot. This is one of my favorite habitats because it has so many cool animals in it that at first glance, it looks very boring, but if you take a deeper look, you can find a lot of cool things. What my friend Toki is pointing out right now is a lump sucker that actually has a special disc on their bellies that allows them to suction onto the glass. So that is actually a modified pelvic fin. So the fins that are around their hip area, but on a fish, it's really closer to where their necks are. And it is actually helping them suction onto the acrylic we have for their habitat. And also they would attach onto the many barnacle tests that are in there and also maybe rocks or other hard surfaces. They can even be found attached to maybe bridges or docks. Uh, they're normally found in the Canadian waters area. They're found in the Pacific Ocean off the coast of the United States, but also they can be found around the coast of Japan. So they can be found in a great area in our ocean, but usually coastal. And I really love them because they're adorable. You can see their size is so small. Uh, they actually range about one to three inches or 2.5 to 7.5 centimeters. They're really small. And it looks like we're going to be doing a feeding. So let's introduce our Aquarius. This is Lizzie. Let's give her a nice little wave. Hi, Lizzie. All right, let's put some food in the water for our animals. Uh, so these are going to be eating some brine shrimp. And I know that it looked like we were just pouring water in there, but brine shrimp are these tiny, tiny little animals that are not exactly a shrimp, but they're very small. And uh, many of our animals here at the aquarium eat brine shrimp. So we do actually hatch them here and feed them out to many animals like the jellyfish and the seahorses. So these are just one of the many animals that eat them. And their mouths are so small, so they have to eat tiny food like these zooplankton. Uh, and as you can see, there's one right in the middle there eating some yummy food. So you might get a chance to see them eat. In their natural habitat, they are going to eat all on their own and they like to eat crustaceans. So this would be in the crustacean category, but they also like to eat worms and possibly other small animals. So many animals when they're first born are super duper tiny, like an octopus is super small when it's born and they would probably eat a baby octopus. Uh, but normally they'll eat other types of shrimp they are able to crush those in their mouths. Although they are really, really small, they do actually have tiny uh, teeth that they are able to use to help get their food in their mouths. And you can see the spiny lump sucker we're looking at right there is attached to the surface, like the one over here too. So uh, they're able to suction onto any surface, which is really good for their survival. If you can't see our lump sucker, that's because they're excellent at camouflage. So they're able to hide really well in plain sight. They kind of look like a sponge. So other animals will not try to eat them. They do have predators. There are larger fish would definitely like to eat a lump sucker uh, and probably anything else that can fit them in their mouth easily. Their main predators are the Pacific cod, the sable fish, the lance fish, and other large fish. This is their... Um, average size, but they do actually get larger. The largest one ever recorded was over 12 centimeters big, which is huge compared to these little ones. And uh, these ones are adorable. They are the cutest animal we have here at the aquarium. If you look closely at the sides of their bodies, you can see these tiny little bumps. We call those tubercles. Uh, they are tiny little cone-shaped plates. 
Uh, and they have those in place of their scales. So they actually don't have any scales on their body, even though it kind of looks like they do. They have tubercles instead. And those are bumps, give them texture that allow them to camouflage with their habitat space and make them look unappealing to eat. So predators will probably decide they are not an edible food. They might think they're just a rock and they'll swim away. And also you can see they are absolutely poor swimmers. So having all of those camouflage things and their suction cup allow them to hide incredibly well so that predators will not try to eat them because they are absolutely terrible swimmers. You know, if they spot a predator or sense one in their area, they usually try to change direction when they're swimming. So they'll change direction, stop, sit down, suction onto something and hide. And that is their best defense. Uh, they usually are uh, very small. So because these animals are so small, uh, they're hard to spot. So if you do come and visit, you'll get a chance to spot them in this habitat space. One of my favorite things about these animals is how they have their babies. So if you look at our lump suckers, we have uh, males and females in here. The females are going to be the larger ones in here. There are three girls and one boy in our habitat here. And uh, this one looks like one of the girls because it seems like a lot larger than our other ones. Uh, although I might be wrong, I'm not the expert on which one is which. And these lump suckers uh, have in the past had success in having babies, which is awesome. Uh, they're not on display. We have to, they have to get a little bit older before they actually have babies that make it to full adulthood. But uh, we're so happy that they are successfully living here. Uh, they can have somewhere between 100,000 to um, over 300,000 eggs at a time, which is a lot. And you might think, how do they look after them? Well, most fish actually will leave their eggs behind and let them grow up on their own. These fish are actually really good caretakers. So the males will actually watch the eggs and fan them with their tail to give them oxygen so they can get the right nutrients they need. And also they will fend off against predators like crabs and sea stars and other small fish. And they actually care for the eggs for up to eight weeks. And that means that male is actually not going to eat during that time because they are going to care for their young so well. Uh, the mothers don't actually care for their young. They let the dads do all the work. The moms carry the eggs, so they have to use all their nutrition and eat well. And then when they lay their eggs, the males fertilize them and they take care of them. So the males are the ones who stay home and look after the animals, which is actually fairly common in the fish world as well. But uh, all lump suckers do this, including the larger cousin we're going to be looking at next. I do really love looking at them because you can see how they swim in their habitat. If you're looking in their habitat, you can see other things. So those large brown things in the background, those are empty barnacles, which we call barnacle tests. Those are really good for them to hide in. It's a really good hiding spot for them, even though there's no predators here. And those spiky things that you can see or the white things, those are our anemones we have in there, which do technically have stinging cells, but our lump suckers will swim away from those areas. So you won't find them near there but the, they will also be eating the brine shrimp diet that we put on there. Thank you, Toki, for sharing with us those anemones. Uh, now we are going to flip over to our other uh, habitat. Well, I'm gonna show you our lovely lump sucker belly so you can see what they look like. So you can see right there, that's what they look like when they suction onto stuff. And we are going to be looking at these animals next, which are the lump fish, which are a larger version of the same type of fish. Uh, they are their close cousins. You can see they also have that suction cup right there at the bottom. Now, if we were to look over at our lump fish, excellent. They are in this habitat here. Uh, and you can see we have our lump fish over at the side. So the lump fish, they have a much larger suction cup on their belly so they can suction onto rocks in their habitat. One of the main reasons they do this is they live in the intertidal zone. So that's the area where the water and the sea meet and in their natural habitat, which these ones actually live on the opposite side of Canada. They live in the Atlantic Ocean, whereas the Pacific spiny lump suckers live in the Pacific Ocean. Uh, these ones, they live where the tides go in and out and they're huge. And they have to deal with that large amount of wave pressure. 
So every two and a half minutes in this habitat, we actually have a dump bucket that goes and allows the water to move in our habitat. So the uh, lump suckers, they end up kind of being moved by that. And they don't mind it because they're used to that sort of moving wave motion and also they have those suction cups. Uh, but I can actually show you a video of what it looks like when the wave is moving. All right. So you can see that the dump bucket here is going to dump the water in at the top and it actually pushes the water right in there for the animals. So they actually don't mind the dump bucket in their space because it is just uh, something that they're used to in their natural habitat. It will happen every two and a half minutes uh, because I can see someone is working on that habitat right now. They might have turned that off so they can deal with the animals in there, uh, which is totally normal here. We end up having to take care of our animals every single day. Uh, our spiny lump suckers, uh, sorry, these lump fish, uh, they're much larger, you can see. Oh, and it looks like we're giving them some food. Oh, that's so exciting. Uh, they are quite a bit larger. So the ones that you can see are as the same like average size, but they can actually get much larger than this. So the largest ones ever recorded were over 60 centimeters long, which is amazing. That's two feet long. These ones are just under a foot long, it looks like. They're not that big. Uh, and they, the maximum weight was 21 pounds, which is a lot. Oh, look at that. These animals naturally in their habitat would eat jellyfish, shrimp, crustaceans, worms and smaller fish like herring and sand lace, uh, sand lance. And here at the aquarium, we would feed them different types of fish and squid, which are the easy foods for us to feed the animals here at the aquarium uh, because we end up feeding most of our animals fish, squid, and clam. So our animals are not really that picky when it comes to what we can feed them here. Uh, it is amazing. One of the coolest things about these animals for when that wave crashes in that they are really, really strong. So a force of over 13 kilograms is required for a uh, lump sucker that is over 30 centimeters to actually get took off the rock they're stuck onto. So if the lump fish uh, is stuck onto a rock, they're suctioned on so well that you need over 13 kilograms of force to take them off of that rock, which is unbelievable because I think I wouldn't be able to hold onto a rock that easily. That's not something I would be good at. One of the features you'll notice on this fish, which is different from the spiny lump suckers, is that they don't really have the same sort of tubercles on their bodies. They just have them kind of centered on their bodies. And if you look at the top of their body, they have a skin layer that goes right over top of their dorsal fin, which makes them look like they have a humpback. Uh, and that just allows them to, again, look like a rock or a sponge or something that is not very edible. They do have uh, natural predators like all other animals. They, uh, theirs are seals, sperm whales, and Greenland sharks. But most often, if a fish or a shark doesn't see them moving, they're probably not going to try to eat them. So they are going to survive just fine on their own. Uh, and you can see how they're uh, kind of a larger version of the fish we were looking at earlier. Uh, one of the things that is actually threatening these animals in their natural habitat is they are actually used as food. Uh, most people don't actually eat lump fish or lump suckers, but these lump fish uh, in their natural habitat would be used as caviar. So the eggs that these animals produce, which is a lot, they can produce up to 300,000 eggs uh, each breeding season. And those eggs would be sold at market for very expensive caviar. Uh, and that is what's actually decreasing their population size. They're not threatened yet. They're considered stable. And the spiny lump suckers, we haven't actually evaluated them yet. So we don't know what their status is. However, they are uh, generally uh, doing OK in their natural habitat. But we can always do our part to help these animals out. So you can actually visit the OceanWise website, which I'm showing here on the screen, to see which animals you should try to eat so that we are not negatively impacting the natural habitat. So this was all about fish food. So if you are a seafood eater like I am, go to this website and go to the OceanWise area of our website and find out where you can choose your food and what you can try to eat that would be helpful to the natural habitat instead of hurting it. So we're not taking out too much of the food that's in there 
So other animals like sharks and seals are able to eat and uh, they'll have enough food. And also these animals will be able to have a good enough population to survive. And that will make a big difference. Uh, these animals are really amazing. They only live for about 13 years. Uh, they, these ones probably only live to six and seven. That's their average lifespan. The oldest one ever was 13 years old, which is really impressive. And they do the same thing the other lump suckers do where they uh, will actually care for their young. The males will care for their young and fan the eggs, the same sort of thing, which I think is really amazing. If you come to visit, both of these animals are next to each other. So we have our spiny lump suckers in the dome-shaped habitat and the lump fish, which are in uh, a habitat that is really close to our lobsters. So if you want to visit us, uh, that would be great. You can come and see them and you can tag us on any of our social media with the hashtag Ripley's Aqua CA. So I had a wonderful time with all of you today. Thank you so much for uh, learning with me today. And I hope you have a great rest of your day. And please do visit us next week where we will have another live where we'll be happy to show you another one of our amazing animals here at the aquarium. I'm going to give you a big wave goodbye. Bye, friends. I hope you have a great rest of your week.